Welcome to LA Tutorials. My name is Alex Hughes and today we're going to go through the process of exporting a Vectorworks file out of a Mac version of Vectorworks 2020 and bringing it into L8. We're going to start with the installation process and if you've got a Windows computer you can look up the companion version of this video that'll cover how to install the uh, plugin. Let's begin. Welcome. So we've got a Mac OS X Catalina system sitting here and we've already dragged across the VWLC zip, which comes out of your L8 folder. So if you need to locate this, this is in the install folder of L8. We're going to quickly extract it, and then we can get rid of the uh, the, ex the non-extracted version. And then we're going to quickly go to the Mac, and we're going to grab the 2020 version, because that's what we're running. If you're running a different version of Vectorworks, we can find the plugins here and we go all the way back to 2012. Uh, there is a chance that if you're running an old version of uh, L8 or if it's quite old, like version 57 and it's still called like Converse, you will need to contact your distributor or get an upgrade to obtain these higher versions. So we're going to take this file and we're going to go into applications and we're going to find Vectorworks. And then we're going to locate the plugins folder and we're just going to copy this file in and then we're going to open up Vectorworks where we will join you in a sec when we've got Vectorworks up and running. Welcome back. So we've got our nice little Vectorworks file up and running here. We've got some fixtures in. We're ready to go. So we just now need to install the plugin now that we've copied the files across. And to do that, we go to tools and workspaces and we want to edit our current workspace. Cool. So now once you've done that, you should see you've got an LC little icon here and we've got three plugins. Now where you want to put these little export plugins is entirely up to you. Most logical people put them under file and export with all the other export options that you've got with Vectorworks. But personally, I prefer to put them under spotlight because that's just where I've put them because I know that it's a spotlight thing. So I'm going to go and find my spotlight folder or uh, location. And when I refer to locations and say spotlight, I'm talking about the tray at the top here that we can see where it says spotlight. So you can see that I've already got them added, but if I didn't have them added, I could just drag them across and add them like so. Then we can click OK and it's going to prompt us to say that we've modified our workspace and that it's been saved. Awesome. And now while we're waiting for Vectorworks to reload all its plugins, I'll run through the three options that we've got. So we've got LC export all, which will export everything in your Vectorworks show file, be it visible, hidden, whatever. Export selected is great for big objects or when you just want to take in a, just a piece of set or something. And export visible is the most common option. So export visible will just uh, import or rather export anything that uh, anything that uh, is currently visible, so trust everything that we can see. But if we wanted to turn off trust and just export stuff, that would be the easiest way of doing it. So we're going to go export visible, and then we're going to choose to save it to our desktop, and we're going to call it example L8, and then we're just going to click save. And it's going to ask us one question, which is in the newer version, which is where do we want L8 to get its fixture IDs from? So I know in my file, they set in Vectorworks to use the unit number, but we could pick a variety of fields depending on uh, where we've got the information. Then when we click OK, it's going to go through and it's going to prepare all our objects and create a 3D old file that we then need to bring across to our L8 installation. So I'll join you when we're back on Windows. So we're back on Windows now and you'll see that uh, we're in our L8 folder. And all that I've done is in the database that I've just created in L8, I've copied the file that we just generated off our Mac into an add-ons folder in the database folder. Now you can choose to put these 3 dl files anywhere, but the software is going to try to continue to look for them. So the best way of dealing with uh, add-on files like this is putting them in the database folder like I've done here. And then when I need to send this to someone else, we can easily just zip up this folder and send it across knowing that everything that we need is going to be in there including add-ons. You can call this folder whatever you want but I am trying to indoctrinate 
our late users with the idea of calling it add-ons because that's what they are. Now we're going to jump across to L8 where I've already made one minor tweak. I've changed my room size, which I realize I'm covered by. Hang on. I've changed my room size so that I've got a width of 40, a length of 30, and a height of 10 because I know that the object I'm bringing in is quite large in scale. And to do that, we do that in the room editor. So if we click room, we can see that we've got those options. Now let me bring us back to full resolution. Lovely. So we'll start with uh, our room objects. Now we can either load it in as a scene at the top here, or if you're having issues with that where it just seems to hang, I've always uh, ended up just going browse 3D model, bringing up the explorer window, and locating what we want here. So if I go to L8 demo and add-ons, and I just click on my 3DL file and wait, it's going to bring all these objects in. So you can see that it's brought all our truss in and all our ladders perfectly. And next, we're going to come across to DMX and do the same and bring the lights in. Before I go any further, if you're bringing in objects, this one's a bad example because we don't have any uh, objects that are on the floor. But if you're finding that objects aren't coming in, although it thinks that the zero point is in the middle of the room, what you can do is you can grab the floor which is just the floor in L8, and just set that to the world center, which I'm also covered by. So we can see here, we've got this world center icon. If with the floor selected, you click world center, it means that the position is going to be zero, 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 which is what we want for the floor. Now we could also make the same for the stage deck, but it means that everything we bring in from no matter what application it is, is going to come in in hopefully the right orientation and location. Let's, uh, let's bring in some lights, shall we? So let's go DMX, Browse, sorry, Fixture Project, Import, Explorer. And we're going to go to the same location and file that we used last time, which is example L8. And then we're going to wait for it to bring all the uh, lovely lights in. So we can see that we've got all the lights in. The first thing that you want to do when you bring a fixture library in like this is down the bottom, we've got these three options. We've got focus, frost, and zoom. And we want to make sure that those are disabled because that means that we've got DMX control of them. So now if we click save, we can see that we've got our full rig here. Now sometimes L8 isn't running off the best information, so it's actually turned our BMFLs into MX blades. So if we just go back into DMX editor here, and we click on all of them and we just go to browse, we can find our uh, BMFL, BMFL, and we can see that what we want is the blade in mode one and we'll click apply. And that's gonna do it for all of them all ready to go. And while we're here, I'll also uh, show you the issue that we've got with focus. And this is a common question that people have. So if we leave focus set to enabled, what's gonna happen is if we go into manual control mode, and we select a light, and we put it on this black back wall, and we put in a gobo, no matter how I want to, the focus is never going to control the uh, the focus of the gobo, which means for theater and stuff, we can't do soft gobos. Now if I disable it and go back in, we can see while it's sharp now, I can actually soften the gobo out nicely. And this also applies when we're doing it, controlling it. So most of the time, I'd say it is vital to change this and especially your zoom because if you're finding that you're coming in and your zoom doesn't work in DMX, this is normally why. Anyway, that's it. We've got our lovely file in. If you've got any questions, feel free to reach out to the L8 support community or the private L8 support group that is available. Thanks for watching.